Hello, Barry. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Can you hear me all right? Uh, beautifully, beautifully. Uh, I think you can hear me. Yes, all good? Yes. Yeah, Perfect. all good. Right, okay. So we've got this new Yes album, Mirror to the Sky. It's actually released on the 19th of May. I've listened to it. I've been really enjoying this record. Uh, oh, great. Thank you. I will put a purchasing, purchasing link just below this video, and I would urge, it, urge, go and check it out. It's available in quite a few configurations, isn't it? A nice... It oh. really is. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the uh, first question I have for you is, you know, I love the, the title of this album. Uh, there's lots of references to the stars and skies and celestial bodies and things like that. Is there a theme or overarching concept explored on this album? Um, I don't think there really is a, it's not a concept album per se, but it's right. interesting when you listen back to the final product, you begin to see all these um, thematic sort of uh, links. Yeah. It's, it's quite interesting when that happens. Yeah, there's a continuity of uh, thematic links, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I was listening to it myself. I wasn't sure whether whether it would be a concept album. I just recognize these sort of motifs and patterns, and I, I, I couldn't resist putting that question to you. But it's um, it has a, a very airy, sort of mystical sound to it as well. It's just wonderful, absolutely wonderful. In true, in true yes fashion. In true yes fashion, yes, exactly. Um, uh, the sound, you know, the sound on this record, it, it seems um, it seems punchier, more dynamic in places. I would say more reminiscent of seventies. Yes, uh, was that mm -hmm. deliberate? And is this record meant to be as a kind of homage to those classic seventies albums? I think we really have to give credit to Thomas Wabbard, Inside Out. He's the head of Inside Out. And in general, he's uh, a big audiophile and music lover. And he really took a personal invested interest in suggesting and encouraging that we go for more of a rockier uh, album with snappier tempos, for example. Right. Um, you know, he gave us the total freedom and support to create the music we wanted to, but he sort of pointed our feet in that direction. Yeah. But it's, uh, you know, it is... Um... Uh, you know, just listening to it, I mean, the first mm -hmm. one you released, uh, I can't remember the first song that was made available. I mean, I, that just blew me away. It just sounded so powerful, so sort of reminiscent of sort of classic yes. It, it was. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, of course, we as a band arose to Thomas's request. <laughs> and I think that we've always wanted to create, uh, you know, what we say in progressive rock circles is an epic. Yes. Something that's more of a full side kind right. of length piece and i think we took that to heart so much that we ended up with several longer songs on the new album uh, mirror to the sky the title track is close to 15 minutes i think and yeah. then we have a couple others that we can talk about um that clock in about nine minutes each they do yeah i mean um, they're all all absolutely um remarkable tracks as well yes um, and then i always say let me just add in yeah. a way, the album is dedicated to all the fans, yeah. you know, because they've always been the ones that have, we've ha have always sensed this desire from the fans yeah. to create, to have us create new music that harkens back to the 70s era. Yes. And we arose to that challenge. And so, again, in a way, it's dedicated to them for helping keep the spirit of Yes music alive and well. Yeah. Yeah. And I certainly got that with listening to this, this stuff that it really does feel um, it, it kind of feels like the, the Yes album that I've been, you know, yearning for for you know a couple of years. I mean, I love the spacey and atmospheric direction you've been going in, but this one seems to be uh, something special uh, in my, as a hardened sort of Yes fan. Thank you um, so much. Okay, that's fine. Um, right, uh, there are some longer pieces on you, as, as you've uh, alluded to. I mean, it's a really, it's really exciting to to listen to. Did you feel this one that you've created something very special in terms of the Yes legacy? And is that legacy kind of a weight on your shoulders at times? I was just wondering. Well, we certainly did feel like we were creating something special, that we were a part of something creating through us. And that's a wonderful feeling as an artist. Um, it's remarkable when it happens. And I think that's what Yes Music is all about. But we've been very sincere with wanting to write and release new music that is very much true yes. and respectfully in line with all that is most revered in Yes Music. Mm -hmm. 
So we're taking it on that sort of challenge, if you will, is something positive that we embrace with great enthusiasm. And then the the, the playing is, uh, as, you know, as you expect from Yes, is just, you know, exceptional. I think Steve's, some of Steve's guitar parts are just absolutely beautiful. But Jay yeah. Shelley, as well, he, he plays uh, so beautifully and, and sympathetic, I think, with that kind of vibe and mood that we had with Alan White. Uh, do you feel that with his playing? I do. I certainly do. And I always have. Mm -hmm. um, besides him just being this, like, huge personality and such a light, you know, he walks in the room and you just want to hang out with him and he makes you feel good doing so. Um, you know, that aside, he's just sort of the ideal Alan White type of school drummer and he was chosen by alan white right to replace the drummer's chair and of course he brings his own passion and uniqueness to it there's definitely a lot of jay shellen in the playing yeah um but yes he does pay highest honor and accurate honor to to um alan uh, absolutely i mean did alan white uh, have a lot to do with kind of schooling him as to say this is how you have to you know you should play or, th or yeah yeah yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean, you can certainly feel that influence. Uh, I mean, I saw you guys live in Nottingham last year and he, he, was, uh, yeah. he was very impressive. Um, you talked about the longer pieces are, are on the album. I mean, we've got to talk about that wonderful uh, 14, 15 minute opus, which is Mirror to the Skies. I mean, I'm interested. I mean, it's so cinematic. Um, my question is, is, is kind of multi multifaceted, really. First of all, how did it come about? Uh, and um, what inspired the, the writing of that one, you know, specifically maybe the lyrics? Yeah, I think we started with, um, Steve came to me one day when we were mixing the quest and he said, mm -hmm. you know, let's just keep going. You know, remember the, the world was still reeling from the pandemic. We couldn't tour, so let's just stay creative, we thought. Yeah. And um, he sat me down one day and he'd taken some earlier demos that him and I had sort of, compiled more or less and put in a folder and tucked away um, earlier stuff from years yeah. past. He put some of that together combined with some of the, and he has this great creative archive and he'll suddenly pull out something and you'll think this is amazing. And he had two of uh, the basis of the song where there's longer instrumental sections. Yeah. He had those outlined as well. Um, so we had a great skeletal outline and one of quite great length, but we didn't really have sections that were vocal ready in any way. Well, so I went away and wrote some music and came back with these various vocal sections that then became the, um, <clears throat> became the bridging link between all these instrumental islands, if you will. Wow. So, so these, all these instrumental islands, this is all stuff that's kind of Steve Howell kind of had on his hard drive i mean what, what's the creative process like does this uh, do you come up with the lyrics and ideas for these songs i do um it was interesting though because steve had one line in one of these sections that he provided he had this great poignant line um dreams of a sky without fire and i thought wow. oh that's fantastic i'm gonna go away and work on that and elaborate on that and that was really the lyrical um beginnings of the song yeah, I mean, did you have a, sorry, go on. Well, I just say that I, I think I drew inspiration from all that is sort of bizarre and the unknown in our existence, you know, those inexplic inexplicable events that seem to link yeah. what we define or believe to be ordinary life and that which is metaphysical or beyond, far beyond the ordinary. Yeah, absolutely fascinating, because yes, I've always kind of explored that sort of area Really, it's what makes their music so ethereal and, and spiritual, I, I would say. Even mm -hmm. way, way back, it's just mm -hmm. remarkable. But it's, it is an incredible piece. It's, as I said, it's so cinematic. And I love the the orchestra that's used on, on, on here as well. It, oh, it's yeah. Such a, a lush, uh, lavish piece. I mean, how, how, did, uh, how did all that come about? Really? How did you get the orchestra involved? That's something Steve had his sight set on, and he said, mm -hmm. I know the perfect you know, composer and arranger. He'd worked right. with Paul Joyce in the past. And Paul's just so brilliant because of his sensitive sort of sensibility of knowing how to embellish, but not to overstep and crowd the music. Because yes, music is already so full, isn't it? 
It is. Yeah. It's already in essence symphonic, um, but he did such a beautiful job at just adding that extra push. And I agree, it's it's brilliant. And that section of Mirror to the Sky where the, yeah. we all drop out and then there's just this feature of, of Paul's where he's taking all the various themes that have already occurred in the song and overlapping them and they all crescendo into this big ending. It's absolutely brilliant. Well, it feels epic and vast, almost like Mirror to the Skies, really. It's just, it's just absolutely fantastic. Yes. Uh, I mean, sticking with some of the songs on the album, I mean, I've got to ask you, it's probably just my ears, but I'm listening to the song Living Out Their Dream. And I sort of feel <laughs> this has a kind of a 60s vibe to it. And it almost feels a little bit like I Am the Walrus. So I'm just wondering, <laughs> is, it, is it a Beatles influence number? You know, that's awesome you say that. I hadn't made the comparison, but I hear it now. <laughs> and yes. Have I ruined it for you? <laughs> no, absolutely not. I think our music is definitely influenced by the Beatles. But, you know, all rock music really is. But um, yeah, that's a great idea of Steve and Jeff's. And um, lyrically speaking, you know, there's so much tongue in cheek irony in that one. It's a really fun song. It's just sort of pokes fun at, you know, how the institution of marriage is so now sort of obsessed with this idea of making it a glitz and glamour sort of ideal <laughs> and how you can impress everybody on social sites. So we had a lot of fun with that one. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's a, it's a fun track to listen to. Who's who's the singer on that one? Because it sounds, it doesn't, who is singing? Is that you singing on that one? It's actually Steve and I singing octaves in unison. And uh -huh. it, it, that's a very good observation, Barry, because um, somehow the way we complement our voices takes us out of our usual sort of defining corners, if you will. Somehow blending my voice with his creates this unique one voice with the two. Well, it, it, it uh, bamboozled me, really. I thought, who is singing this? Uh, mm. I, could, I wonder who it was uh, Billy, uh, Billy singing or something like that. But uh, I have to say that your voice and Steve's together uh, beautifully complement each other. I think your voice complements Steve's voice even more so than I think with John Anderson. Uh, mm. They just work so well together, um, I think. Um Okay, I mean, Steve Howe said this album, to quote, this album is a demonstrative of us growing and building again. I mean, do you feel like you're building upon uh, an old legacy? You're just creating something very, very new. Um, I'm kind of it feeds into the question I already asked you in some respects. Yeah. I guess metaphorically, imagine if the institution of yes as a concept is like this giant and grand museum of beautiful art. Uh -huh. And we're just adding on new halls of exciting opportunities wherein we can exhibit our current art, but all respectfully within the great museum of, of yes. <laughs> How's that for an answer? It's a, it's a beautiful analogy, which I think fits very well into the, the, the idea of yes music, I think. Mm. Um, why is this one so soon after the quest? And my question is, um, what is the quest? Uh, I suppose I'm coming back to the concept album thing again. Uh, so why is this album so soon after the quest and what was the quest? Yeah, the quest is just to keep going, <laughs> you know, when the world falls into temporary darkness, like, you know, with the pandemic and all that, when it all goes to hell, just keep going because what doesn't thrive withers away. Okay. Okay. I guess that's the quest. And, you know, remember because, well, it's interesting. Um, I mentioned the pandemic and I don't want to talk too much about it. We're all so tired of it, but yeah. There was a silver lining in that happening because it really got us focused in the studio. If we couldn't tour, we would continue writing. And we were so much, um, we were so focused with that endeavor that we, our efforts doubled up. Yeah. So in essence, by the time the quest was finished, we already had nearly half another album. Wow. I mean, I, I read somewhere, I don't know whether you said it or Steve has said it, that there's, there's even a lot, still, a lot of material still in the can looking towards another album after this one. That's right, yeah. yeah I mean, that's uh, yeah. Absolutely, uh, uh, absolutely fabulous. Uh, well, working on the quest, um, remember the six of us, that's including Jay, we yeah. hadn't ever worked on an album together with this particular lineup. So I think what the quest did for us was it, it gave us our stride and we oh. developed a confidence and familiarity working with one another. Yeah, yeah. So in that way, the quest was the impetus for the new album, Mirror to the Sky, and everything else that will now follow. What are your favorite tracks on this album? 
I really don't play favorites, Barry, but it sort of just depends on my mood, I guess. Yeah. Um, they're all they're all unique and special in their own way, and I think that's what makes such a great album. Yeah. Um, I I really can't answer that. Yeah, all connected is a is a remarkable. That's one of the longer ones as well, isn't it? Yes, it, yes, it is. In fact, that's our second single for the album, and that's coming out in two days' time, actually. Right. Is it going to be in truncated form because it, it runs at nine minutes? I think. Single. No, no, actually, I mean that did come up for a hot minute. We all discussed that, but back to Thomas Waber with uh -huh. all his musical integrity, he said no. This is what the fans want. We're putting it out as is. Excellent. What's the inspiration behind that one uh, of interest? Because I was listening to it the other night. I just think it's just be such a beautiful, beautiful track. I wonder oh, what thank you. It. Yeah, it, it's uh, the inspiration is pulled from, from so many things because I worked on that with Billy and Steve. And we started with, with Billy's brilliant instrumental ideas and lots of them. And he had some lyrics and sections where he sang. Mm -hmm. And I love that when we can have a, a dual sort of vocal identity in a song. It yeah. adds so much to the storytelling. Um, and I think uh, he had the title all connected already, um, evident in the lyric. And he was approaching it more about how we're all connected in a literal sense in the physical. And then, of course, I wanted to yesify it, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> and I great, thought, great well, book. we're all connected on a, in a metaphysical way as well so there's yeah. that dichotomy of our personalities in there and i love that and then of course steve uh supplied the brilliant intro mm -hmm. on his steel which uh crescendos beautifully and then takes us into the proper song um, and we finished the song the song concludes with steve's theme as well yeah um it, and it's a very complex song with all those interesting proggy twists and turns but it's amazing how inspired and quickly it came together really i mean i find i was listening to the album and i find those uh quite proggy ones with all those twists and turns you speak about they're the ones that really sit really strike me and that one uh uh i thought was a, a, a one of the fabulous ones on, on this record great um i'm gonna like, talk about inspiration i mean what, what inspired the wonderful opening track cut from the stars oh yeah well um Again, Billy came with some brilliant musical ideas. And I enjoyed this one because I got to sort of take the arranger's chair on it nice. and start um, basically, I did major surgery on it, move things around because what you need to do is then create something that supports a vocal arrangement. So um, I think, yes, music's more than even other music. Uh, is so cinematic and uh, has this sort of soundtrack quality to it, mm -hmm. which if you listen to it intently, this is what I do when I want to come up with lyrics. I'll listen intently to what the music is trying to convey in its raw emotion. Mm -hmm. What story is it trying to convey? And there's usually something within the sound of an instrument or a section that suggests a lyrical direction. And I heard, I immediately heard uh, or rather I saw, I had these mental impressions of a vast, perfectly dark night sky and shimmering stars. What can I say? That's just what came to me listening to the music. <laughs> right. I mean, it was such a, it, I mean, when I, I heard it, I thought this is, this is um, something quite special, actually. It was, uh, and then obviously listening to the album after that, it's got other pieces on there that were equally, uh, equally as good. Um, next question, really, I'm thinking, well, we're going yeah. to upon this but you the vocal harmonies you know yes we're also we're always famous for those three-part harmonies but the vocal harmonies are absolutely exquisite as i've said i think your voice works beautifully with steve's um are you a fan of the beach boys at all bit of a silly oh question. yeah absolutely I lo i've always loved the beach boys in fact i think their greatest hits album was probably one of the first i ever owned as a child okay and we're like the yes boys now the dulcet <laughs> tones of john steve and billy in three-part harmony <laughs> exactly. I mean, because obviously they were famed for the beautiful harm harmonies and uh, uh, and the Eagles as well. A bit later on in the seventies as well. Beautiful yeah. harmonies. I agree. But, I agree. But you know, yes, um, uh, it was always that fantastic melding of voices. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad to see that's a tradition. That's you know, you 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 keep going as a part of the identity of this band. 
Yeah, and I, yeah, and further to that idea, I always sort of heard Crosby, Stills, and Nash oh. as an influence for the earlier uh-huh. harmonies, or as Tom Waits would say, Crosby steals the cash. <laughs> I had the good fortune of seeing Crosby, Stills and Nash a few years ago. Oh, cool. Uh, uh, you always worry about seeing these guys at this age, what are, what are they going to be sitting? And they just sounded beautiful. David Crosby was in fine voice. Yeah. And I went to see Art Garfunkel, you know, because I love Simon and Garfunkel. Oh, oh yeah. Art Garfunkel, and I thought, what's that going to be like? Because he's, he's a man that's nearly 80 now, but um, he, he sang for Emily wherever I may find her. I closed my eyes and I swear I could have been way back in 1969. It was just absolutely, absolutely. Uh, that's brilliant. I actually relate to him a lot as a vocalist because he's also a counter tenor yeah. as I am. And yeah, a beautiful, beautiful voice. And, you know, he's not the at all the typical rock and roll singer. And I'm not either. And nor is John Anderson. And I think that means then that I guess there's more um, proper technique involved, if yeah. you will, um, that um, enables one to sing at the same level later in life. Yeah, yeah. It's certainly my ambition to uh, one day interview Art Garfunkel. I don't know if it'll ever come about, but who knows. Um I've got to move on to the, obviously it was so disappointing that the tour was cancelled. Um, yeah. Will you be returning to the road and... Well, we get to hear some of this, this the, the obviously the stuff on the new album. Will we get to hear some of that live? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, we'll invariably be touring the States this fall. So mm-hmm. jump the pond and come join us. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying, we're, we're in the <coughs> trying to get uh, England up and running for next year as yeah. well. Um, and that's all I can say about it right now. Um, but yeah, we had so much um, encouragement from audiences last year during our tours when we played a couple songs from The Quest. Okay, uh, yeah. The first on the album, actually, one called The Ice Bridge and the other mm-hmm. Dare to Know. Um, the, the audience response was overwhelmingly positive. We were really you know, touched by that. So I think that, again, that harkens back to this idea that we are striving to write and release new music that's very much in line with, you know, the proper yes canon. Yeah, I mean, I was at, I was at one of the shows. Um, I took my daughter to the show. She doesn't know any yes music, so I just wanted her to mm. experience it really. But uh, um, yeah, the new tracks that were included, I, I think, were certainly well received, and they fitted in nicely with all, all, all the other music on the, on display that night. But you're doing these album, you're doing these album tours. I'm just wondering whether or not you, you've cancelled the idea of playing Relaya in its entirety because that's a can that's been kicked down the road a few times now. Yeah. Can you not say anything about that? No. All I could say is. Watch this. Yes. Space. No. Maybe so. Okay. <laughs> I can't say yes on that. Yes, just a maybe. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll take a maybe. Um, interesting. My next question is uh, going down the same sort of avenue, really. I was uh, one of my favourite Yes albums is Topographic Oceans, and uh, uh, there was nothing played from Topographic on the last tour. So I'm thinking it's got to be represented for the next tour because it's the 50th anniversary of the album. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Are there any plans to mark that album in some way, or a box set, or something like that? There will be something special that we will provide pay mm-hmm. homage to it yes yeah well, I'll, that's I'll, all i'll say for now barry <laughs> that's fine i mean I, you know i'm grilling you away and that's fine I, that's okay uh, <laughs> hopefully when i get to speak to steve I'm, i want to ask him about because he said that he has loads and loads of cassettes from you know way back to the 60s in his arc i'm going to ask are there any soundboard recordings of the 73 74 tour oh I've, yeah i've got to ask him that question <laughs> That's but, a very good question. You ask him for both of us, will you? <laughs> yeah, well, okay, I will. Um, my last question for you is, um, is uh, what is your favourite yes piece? What are your favourite yes pieces to play? And uh, Tomato album, I know you did a song from the Tomato album, the last tour, but it's not generally an yeah. album that's overlooked. Would you ever consider playing that in its entirety? Oh, 100%. I mean, remember, um, Billy J and myself were Yes fans before we became Yes members. So yeah. I think the fanboys in us would love to be able to play Tomato. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll, we'll vie for that, okay? Because <laughs> oh, Ma- I love Madrigal on that as well. That's another Yes. On that yeah. We've actually done an acoustic version of that. I don't know <clears> if you, 
if you ever caught that in years past, I think the last time we did that was maybe it was Royal Affair 2019, but definitely during the 50th anniversary in 2018, yeah. where Steve and I play guitar and I sing and Billy then comes on halfway through and does some of the harmonies, a stripped down version, but a lovely version nonetheless. Yes. Well, that, that's, my, that's my last question. I will uh, end with a plug uh, for this album, Mirror to the Sky, which was released on the 19th of May. There is a purchasing link just below this video. I would urge you to check it out. I think it's a, a really, really good album. Uh, John, uh, thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. And, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll catch you on the road next year when you uh, bring it to dear old Blighty again. Yeah, I'd really like that. I'd love that. And I hope to meet you sometime, Barry. Yeah, well, I shall certainly be at one of the shows. Uh, I was at the one in Nottingham last time. I shall certainly, depending on what dates you're going to play, but uh, I sh me and my daughter will be at one of them. Great. You, you have a wonderful day. Um, thank you so much for this interview. My pleasure. And you. Have a good day, Barry. Okay. All the best. Bye-bye. All the best. Bye-bye.